Hello, guys. To the people that is already connected, welcome. Thank you so much for being always ahead of time, okay? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Well, um, welcome guys once again to this class. It is already eight o'clock. So, but first of all, before something else, I would like to ask you, can you hear me clearly? Like if there's any problem or something, can you hear me? Yes, teacher. All right, because right here it's raining, but a lot. So I think that um, Zoom allows me to avoid the background sound, but I was like kind of worried that it was not going to work. But if you can hear me like clearly, I think that there's no problem. So welcome once again to this class. That's why I have my microphone here because if I put it, like this way, you're not going to be able to listen to me. So that's why I'm going to be like this and this way. So um, as I was saying, welcome. Uh, we are just six today. I don't know what happened with the other ones. Probably they are going to be connecting through the, through the session. I hope so. But you guys that are already connected, thank you so much for being always on time. And the shows that you want, like, I mean that you're here and at least it shows that you want to learn okay so um let me see all right just a moment all right for today we have something that is very important for you to know it is um Today, we're going to see something about W8 questions, the way that we have to use them. How do we have to, um, like some examples about W8 questions, the most common examples or the most common questions that we ask when we are in a conversation or, or in our daily basis. If by any chance there's any problem with the, with the internet, or if at any point of the session, you are not able to listen to what I'm saying, please let me know. Please say, I cannot listen to you. Or if you can send a text through the chat, 
so I can verify that because as I told you before, uh, the place where I live at, it's, it's raining like a lot, like very heavy. And uh, so I don't know, but we're going to start today guys because time is gold. So we're going to do the best that we can. So please let me know if you are able to listen to the, to the screen. Can you see it? Yes, teacher. All right, perfect, thank you. Uh, well, as I was saying before, today we will have uh, something about WH questions. I know that you already know a lot about these, like the way that we have to use them, but there are still some of them that are kind of complicated because we have, uh, for example, who's, uh, which is not that common, but it's necessary for you to remember or to know what that is, okay? So we are going to go through all of them and we're going to see some examples as well so we can completely understand the WH question usage, okay? So we're going to go with the first part. And uh, let's see. All right. Okay. Here we have the common ones, like the, the ones that most of you already know, like who, like what, like when, like which, why. And even we have how even though it doesn't start with the WH, but it belongs to the WH question. So that why, that's why it is right there. Even though it, it doesn't start with the letter WH, right? And we have which and we have where. These ones that we have right here are the, the main ones, but still here, we have one that is not included. I'm gonna put it right here and it is whose. This one uh, is not that common to see it, but it is really important when it comes to ask about belongings, okay? So it's very important that you know how to use it. So as I told you before, we are going to go like one by one so you can understand and you can clarify any doubt that you might have, okay? So we're going to start with the first one. Well, actually, this is kind of an advice for you. It says that when it comes to answers, cuando tenemos respuestas, we cannot um, answer the WH questions with a, a yes or a no. Why it is necessary for you to give a full answer or a complete answer. You cannot say only yes, or you cannot only say no. It is important that you uh, make like a full answer. As an example, if I ask you, what are you doing? If I ask you, what are you doing? It will, it will, it will sound weird if you just tell me yes because I'm asking you something, so you will have to give me some extra information about it. So keep in mind, WH questions cannot be answered with yes or no. It's not possible. You will always have to give extra information or in that case, to give um, information about the question that someone is asking to you. All right, let's move on. Let me see what we have right here. All right, we're going to start with the first one that is who. The question who it is equals to, to ask or to name a person. We have an example right there like, who is he? Oh, he is my teacher. You see right here, that's why it was, I was telling you before that we cannot just answer the WH questions with yes or no. Why? Because it's necessary for you to give more information or detailed information about 
that question. Because if you ask me, who is he? I cannot say yes. And si digo solo yes, that's not even an answer. So you have to give extra information. So I'm pretty sure that you already know this. So we're going to go like fast, okay? So in case you have any question, just let me know or say, teacher, I have a question. So we can stop for a little bit and um, try to explain you, all right? But because I consider that this is a very easy topic that most of you already know about it. So we're going to just go ahead and move forward and just, just if you have any questions, just let me know, okay? So uh, something that we have to remember is that who it is to name a person. We have the sample right, here, right there. Who is he? He's my teacher. So here we have some example or like the common questions that we can ask with who. Or in this case, some questions that you can use when it comes to a conversation. So um, I will need some help. Any volunteer that would like to help me with the first two, then I will need another person that will help me with the next two and the next two and the last ones. So any volunteer? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Who are you? Who is he or she? Very good. Thank you so much. Any other volunteer? Who, Who is, is your best friend? Who is calling? Who is calling? Very good. The next two, please. Another volunteer. Who wants some ice cream? Who ask uh, uh, the question? Okay. In this one, the pronunciation of this one. De este el verbo preguntar, la pronunciación de esta ed in past suena como t. So we say asked. Who asked? asked. Exactly. Asked. Like that. Asked the question. Very good. So, and another person for the last two. Who is faster? Who is faster? Who is the most beautiful? Who is the most beautiful? Okay, as I was telling you before, these questions, the ones that we have right here, are the most common ones or the, the ones that we use the most when it comes to a conversation. For example, if we are talking with someone that we don't know, we the first question we should ask is like, who are you? Who are you? Like, quien sos, right? So those are the most common questions that we have. Something that I want to tell you guys and that I need you to always remember, please. The intonation in a question, it is something very, very important. Why? Because if you don't make the intonation, it means that you are not asking a question even though you want, you are trying to make a question. So even in Spanish, we make kind of an intonation to let the receiver to know that we are making a, a question. So that's why it is very important to intonate, right? Just keep that in mind. So uh, moving forward, we have the next one that is what, what it is about names, objects, uh, ideas or actions or something that we are doing at that moment. Example, what is that? What is that? It is a pencil. So I think that you have very clear this. So I'm just going to move forward. Just in case you have any questions, remember, let me know. The same here. In this one, in this part, we have the most common examples about what. So we have uh, right there, what is it? What is it? Or what is it? What is it? What is it? So intonation, as I was saying, is very important. Uh, Mr. Eric, can you help me with the next three, please? What is, what is that? Oh, there we have a mistake. What is? There we have a mistake. We still, we're missing the letter 
We're still missing over there. An apostrophe and the verb be. So what's this or what's that? Very good. The next one, please. What, what day is it? Very good, thank you. What? Okay. Uh, let me see. Um, let's see who else. Kelia, can you please help me with another three questions? Hello, teacher. Can you please help me with the other three questions? What is the weather like? Mm -hmm. What do you want to eat? And what are you doing? Very good, thank you so much. And the last three questions, Tatiana Martinez, can you help me please? What time is it? What do you do? What does your father do? What does your father do? Okay, very important. So let's move on with the next ones. So we have when. When it says that we use it to name the time. When we are going to always use it to start or to talk uh, or to make questions about the time. For example, when does the start, uh, when does the class start? When does the class start? Can someone tell me what is this question to what tense belong? A que tiempo pertenece? We already saw that, so you must remember that. What type of question is that one? What tense is it there? ¿Qué tiempo está ahí? Maybe about time. Pasado. Can you repeat that again? Pasado. Are you sure that it's past? Simple tense. Present. Do you remember what was our first topic? The first class that we have, that we had? What was it? ¿Cuál fue nuestro primer tema, chicos? About two and those. Present tense. The present. So this question, it is in present. So do you remember when we saw how to create questions in simple present? So here we have the same structure. That's why it's very important that you remember the classes. Why? Because if you don't remember that, you might get lost. So as you can see here, we have the same structure that we saw at that moment. So the question is, when does the class start? The answer, it starts at three o'clock. So also we have some examples right here, like the most common questions that we can ask when it comes to a conversation, when it comes to, to what? To, to meet a new friend or new people or what to make a conversation with someone else. So here we have like, when is your birthday? When is your birthday? When is a field trip. When is a field trip? When does the movie start? When does the movie start? When does the train arrive? When does the train arrive? When do you do your homework? When do you do your homework? When are you free? When are you free? When were you born? When were you born? When is their anniversary? When is their anniversary? When does the class finish? When does the class finish? So guys, any questions so far or everything is clear so I can move on?
Hello, guys. I need a yes or a no. No. Not is, is not clear? No, it's all clear. I'm sorry. I didn't get what you said. You said no. It's all clear. Oh, got it. Okay. Cool. So, um, well, for the people that, that just connected, connected like some minutes ago, the reason why I have the like the little microphone right here is because in the in the place where I'm living at, it's like raining heavily, like really, really hard with thunder sound um, with a lot of rain. But like fortunately, this application Zoom allows you to like to avoid the background sound. So it, it helps a little bit but it's kind of complicated right now because sometimes I cannot listen that well because of the rain. I can listen to the rain, but it's really complicated. But let's move on. So um, here we have where it is used to name a place or location. Where are my books? They are on the desk. So remember that just for places and locations. And also here we have the most common questions uh, when it comes to conversation and to know about locations. So I will need some help, like um, three questions, the first three questions, the other three, and the last three. I will need a volunteer, so I won't ask for any name. Any volunteer, guys? Where is my pencil case? Pencil. Where... Pencil case. Pencil. Where are... Pencil. Mm -hmm. Where are my glasses? Glass. Where, I... Where is the post office? Where is the post office? Very good. Thank you so much, Mario. Any other volunteer, guys? The Where are you person? from? Where are you from? Mm -hmm. Where is he or she from? Where are they from? Very good, thank you. And the last three questions, any other volunteer? Where do you work? Where do you want to go? And where is Canada on the map? Okay, as you can see, those questions, or so these questions that we have right here, are the most common. The ones that we use in a normal conversation that we have with a friend, or with someone that, that we are meeting, right? So I think that this is not that complicated, so we'll just move forward. So we have why, and this one, it is used uh, to tell a reason or a purpose. And this one, I know that you, you already know that every time that someone asks you a question with why, the very beginning of the sentence or the very beginning of your answer will be because. Creo que a este punto la mayoría saben que cuando alguien les hace una pregunta con why, ustedes automáticamente van a responder because, right? Because you are giving a reason. Porque van a dar una razón o un propósito del why. So every single time, do not forget that. So why are you so happy? Because I love English class. So um, keep that in mind, guys. So here we have, uh, again, the, some examples for the most common questions that we have uh, using why. And can someone help me with the first three questions, please? Any volunteer? Why are you sad? Why are you crying? Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? Okay. Laughing. Okay, yes. The next three questions, please. Another volunteer. Please, guys, try to participate because most of the time it is only Mario, Eric, Sometimes Monica, sometimes, uh, let's see, what, 
Catherine and uh, Lisette that she is not here today, but almost always the same people is participating. The other ones are just there. I don't know if you're paying attention or not, but remember, this is the time where you can get to practice. As I told you last time, outside of this class, nobody else speaks in English. So you got the opportunity right here to practice. If you don't do that, I mean, it's up to you guys. Why are, Why are you late? Why was Chris not at school yesterday? Okay. Why are you running? Okay. Why did you people exercise? Thank you. And the last two? Why do we need to study English? Why do you think he did that? This question right here, it is something that you should ask yourself. Why did you need to study English? You should ask yourself that question. So let's move on. We have which. This WH question is not that commonly used. No es muy común utilizarla, but it's very important. Why? Because with this WH question, you will have the chance to present two choices or to give a, um, two, two options to someone. For example, we have right there, which one do you want? Te hace la pregunta, ¿cuál, cuál quieres? but making reference, pero haciendo referencia to the two ice cream, right? To this one right here. So let's suppose that they have the two, tienen las dos paletas con ellos, but the person que los está atendiendo eh, les presenta las dos. So in that case, we have two options, as you can see. This WH, question will be always used as a best way to give two options or even three options or more than two options as well. So, but in this case, the, the example that we have represented right here, it is just about two options, right? The red, the, the red one and the yellow one. So this little boy is asking to this little girl, which one do you want? but making reference to these two things that we have over here. And she says, uh, I want the red one. So in this one, it is very important that you notice that when someone asks you a question with which, you, because you have the choice or options between the ones you can choose, you will always, your answer will always be the, the, the thing that you decided or that you wanted the most at that moment. So here we have uh, once again, the most common ones. So let me see, I'm going to select someone. And let me see, Alfred Guillen, hello, sir. Can you please help me reading the first three questions? Hello, good evening. Another example. Yeah, the three ones, the first three. Okay. No, just tell me to read. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Which one do you prefer? Uh -huh. No, 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 just tell me to read. <laughs> okay. Which one do you prefer? Prefer. Uh -huh. Which teacher do you like the most? Which on my books would you like to borrow? Thank you. So let me see. Uh, let me ask someone else. Let me see. Tatiana Martinez. Can you help me with the next ones, please? Which one it is? Mm -hmm. Which? Way is it to the library? To the library. Library. Which restaurant? What? 
Which restaurant shall shall we shall go to? Wait, shall we go to? Very good, thank you. Which restaurant shall we go to? So number one, which one do you prefer? Which teacher do you like the most? Which of my books would you like to borrow? Which one is it? Which way is it to the library? Which restaurant shall we go to? So those ones are the most common ones. One more time, when it comes to conversation, when it comes to normal activities that we can face outside of the world. So these ones are the most common that we have in the English language. So let's move on. Uh, let me see. From all the people that is here, we are 15 right now in this video call. Do you know how to use who's? How many people here in this class know how to use who's? ¿Cuántos saben cómo se utiliza who's? Hello. I'm not. No, any ideas? Not at all. Primera vez que lo veo yo por decir la típica. Okay, very good. So, as I told you at the very beginning, la mayoría de los que conocemos son what, who, why, where, que son los que más utilizamos. Como Pero, decir los comunes. Exactly, the most common ones. But when it comes to which, cuando está which y whose, estos generalmente no los utilizamos. Incluso, voy a regresar, I will go back, I will go back to this one. Eh, this one, who, es considerado informal. ¿Por qué es considerado como el lenguaje común, el que todas las personas utilizan? Pero en un lenguaje súper formal, como un lenguaje eh, utilizado por personas de un, de un alto rango, como presidents, like jury, juzgado, like judge, like like very formal documents, en documentos muy formales, vamos a encontrar esta palabra, whom, que es el equi... How do we say that in Spanish? El equivalente. 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 Yeah. El equivalente a who. So it will be exactly the same thing. Significará lo mismo. But this one right here is like very, very formal. This one, it is only used with very, like what precedents, as, as I told you before, and very formal documents. En documentos muy formales, como cartas que ustedes van a redactar, eh, o que en algún momento puedan redactar. This word, whom, es la que se utiliza para documentos formales y la que utilizamos en nuestro vocablo o vocabulario diario, like in English, o el más común es who. All right, so I just wanted to tell you that. Es importante que lo sepan por si en algún momento lo llegan a ver en algún documento. So you already know what whom means. Significa lo mismo. Just so. Let's move on. Let me go back to where, where I was. Oh my God. Okay. All right, here we are. Whose we are going to use it to show possession or ownership. Este whose lo vamos a utilizar para mostrar posesión o propiedad. ¿Qué significa whose? Whose in Spanish means de quién. But este whose no lo vamos a utilizar como eh, generalmente hacemos para crear las preguntas, como con what, como con where, como con who. No, this one, este tiene su propia forma de crearse 
y tiene una estructura para poder formar una question. Lo primero que va a ir evidentemente es la palabra whose. Después de whose, siempre, always, it's mandatory. There are some exceptions, hay algunas excepciones, but almost always, it's mandatory poner un noun. O sea que aquí, yo después de whose, no puedo poner un verbo. Yo no puedo decir who is shared on the floor. No, never. So these type of questions are kind of complicated when it comes to, uh, to grammar, but it's not actually that complicated. Algo que tienen que recordar, primero va a ir whose, luego un sustantivo, puede ser que una casa, for example, un ejemplo, digamos que alguien dejó una cartera en tu carro. Ustedes van manejando, llevaban a alguien y alguien dejó la cartera. Entonces tú vienes y quieres preguntar, ¿de quién es esa cartera? You are going to say, let me, see, let me write this down. You are going to say, who's wallet is this? ¿De quién es esta cartera? Porque estamos suponiendo, we're supposing right now, estamos suponiendo que alguien iba en tu carro y dejó la cartera. Ahí. So, tú preguntas, ¿de quién es esta cartera? So, something very important that you need to remember. Primero, whose. Luego de esto, tiene que ir eh, el sustantivo, que en este caso sería wallet. This will be the noun. And after that, we will have what? In this case, the verb be. Que generalmente, eh, o casi siempre, se va a utilizar el verb be como un auxiliar para formar these questions. And, y en este caso, que the last part, la última parte, we will, we're going to call it complement. Vamos a llamar complement. Complement. All right. So, this is the structure. Esta es la estructura that you need to follow. Que tienen que seguir uh, to create, to create uh, uh, questions with whose. Recuérdense, este whose va a significar de quién. En el sentido de pertenencia. So here we have an example right here. It says, whose shirt is on the floor? La camisa de quién está en el, en el piso? Generalmente, generally, when we answer these type of questions, cuando respondemos ese tipo de preguntas, vamos a utilizar un sustantivo posesivo. Si ustedes se fijan acá, ¿alguien me podría decir qué significa John's shirt? Or do you have any idea of what that is? La camisa de John. La camisa de John. Yes, very good. Pero, ¿saben qué significa esta apóstrofe S? Es que eso significa el verbo to be contractado. No. Possession. Very good. It's very good. Oh, well, it is actually es muy bueno saber que ya saben. So it's not that complicated. So most of the time when, uh, when it comes to the answer for whose, we are going to use a possessive of a noun. So we have the example right here. Whose shirt is on the floor? John's shirt is on the floor. So, almost always, casi siempre se utilizan los posesivos, but not always. Almost always, not always, okay? So, let's move on to another example so you can have any other idea. We have an example right here with a pen. And we have the image over there that we have a pen on the desk, right? So, the question is, whose pen is on the desk? 
That is my pen on the desk. Si se fijan, if you can notice right here, we are not using a possessive, are we? In this one, it, we are not using a possessive. What are we using? Estamos utilizando un pronombre demonstrativo. ¿Cuál es el plural de that? Does any of you know? ¿Alguien de ustedes sabe cuál es el plural de that? This. This. Like this. Or like this. The first. The first one. First one. No, actually it is not. El plural de that, it is those. Y el plural de these es this. This this, this, this. It is very important also that you know how to pronounce that and to make the difference between estas dos, porque la mayoría de veces tendemos a hacer la misma pronunciación para las dos, and that is not right. This one, esta de acá es this, and this one right here, it's this. Es como una de un poquito vibrada, this. Y el plural de that, it is those. So, estos cuatro de acá son the demonstrative pronouns. Los pronombres demonstrativos. That we can also use them when we have questions with whose. The answer, right? We can use them in questions with whose. So let me show you on this part right here. We also have some common, some common questions as the other ones. Excuse me, it's not working. Okay, here we have some common examples. Sure. Yes. And. Um... Uh -huh. how, uh, how is is common? Yeah, common. In uh, how much? How many? It is in in quantifier or no? Yeah. I don't. That that's some like kind of quantifiers. Quantifier. Quantifier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are okay. Going we're going to go there because we're almost there. Ya vamos a llegar a how. So we can see the differences or different type of, of uh, things or meanings of how. So here we have, guys, the most common questions when it comes to whose. Whose shoe is this? De quien es el zapato? Whose shoes are these? Whose glasses are those? Whose book is this? Whose wallet is this? Whose motorbike is, there? is that? Whose shoes are this? Whose car is parked over there? So these ones are just part of the most common ones that we have with whose. Is there any question with whose guys? Is there any question or there is not? Cuando se usa this, this, y dos. Um, okay. En, en este caso, this, eh, siempre va a ser utilizado para plural. El significado de este con T, H, I, S, this, es este, esa, eso. So, en este caso, si yo tengo un libro, yo quiero decir, si yo no tengo algo específico, como si yo te pregunto, ¿de quién es este libro? No tengo específicamente a algo o a alguien o que sepa yo de quién es. Por eso yo digo, 
este en general. Here we have another example. Con el plural de this, que es this. Como, como lo dice ahí el plural, va a ser utilizado para... El, puedes hacer la misma pregunta. Por ejemplo, si yo tengo whose book is this, yo la puedo hacer en plural y en vez de utilizar this, voy a lo, cambiarlo a this. So I'm going to say whose books are this. ¿De quiénes son esos? Estos. It will change. El mismo significado que tiene este en, en singular, you are going to change it the same one, but in plural. La forma en que la vamos a utilizar cuando los utilizamos por ellos solos, it's a completely different story. Es una historia completamente diferente. ¿Por qué? Cuando lo usamos por ellos solos, tenemos que seguir una estructura. Primero va a ir el this, that, those. Luego el verbo to be, que siempre van a estar acompañados del verbo to be. Y luego un complemento. Esa es la manera en que lo utilizamos by themselves. But when it comes to whose, it's completely different. En este caso, cuando lo utilizamos with the question whose, ellos solamente son un complemento. Thank you. All right. So, here we go. Aquí vamos with the question of someone of you did. Vamos a, we're going to know a little bit about the questions that we have with how. How, as it says over there, is used to ask about the way something is done, the condition of something, or the degree of something. Hay diferentes formas de utilizar how. How, por sí solo, by itself, means como. But we have like a different or a variety, una variedad, the ways that we can use it, the forma de utilizar. So we are going to know a little bit about those ones and we're going to see also some examples. But here we have like the general one. Aquí tenemos like in a very general form. We have, how was your vacation? Como estuvo tu vacacion? Oh, it was great. So this is the use in general. El uso en general que tiene la WH question how. Aunque no inicia, even though it is not, it doesn't start with the WH, how it is considered part of the WH questions. So that's why we have it right here. So here we have, aquí tenemos lo que su compañero estaba preguntando. We have different ways, different forms to use how. Si utilizamos, podemos utilizar how con un adjetivo o con un adverbio. Si yo digo how far, en ese momento ya no va a significar cómo, sino que va a significar qué tan lejos. How far, distance. That's why we have right here. Y aquí tenemos un ejemplo. How far is Patea from Bangkok? ¿Qué tan lejos está Pattaya de Bangkok? So when we add, cuando agregamos este adverbio far, automáticamente cambia el significado. So how far, ¿qué tan lejos? So, ¿qué pasa cuando yo agrego el adjetivo long? And yo digo, how long? ¿Cuánto tiempo? How long? Esto me soy, eh, es como una medida de tiempo o espacio. Si yo utilizo, how long? Si yo te digo, how long does the class take? ¿Por cuánto tiempo tomas la clase? How long? And here we have an example. Aquí tenemos otro ejemplo. How long will it take? ¿Cuánto tiempo te tomará? How long? So, as you can see here, the meaning change drastically. So, la palabra how by itself significa como. But when we connect it, when it is connected to an adjective 
either an adjective or an adverb, it will change the meaning. What if I say how many? In este, in este caso, si yo digo how many, it is utilizado como quantifier or quantity para sustantivos countable, countable nouns. Si yo digo how many es cuánto, pero únicamente utilizado para countable nouns. We have an example right here. How many cars are there? ¿Cuántos carros hay? We have how much. Tenemos how much, que también significa cuánto. It is also a quantifier. Pero en este caso, how much is going to be used for an uncountable noun. Cosas que no podemos contar. Eh, cosas incontables, right? So we have an example right here. How much money do you have? En nuestro idioma, cuando escuchamos, when we listen to this question, like, how much money do you have? Podríamos pensar que, pero el dinero sí lo puedo contar, vea. Yo puedo saber cuánto tengo, que si tengo 10 dólares, if I have $20 or something like that. But in English, en inglés, la pala o el sustantivo, money, nos es, es catalogado como incontable. En nuestro idioma tal vez podríamos clasificarlo como contable, pero not in English. Okay, keep that in mind, please. So once again, how far is going to be for distance? How long for length or time or space? How much and how many is going to be used as quantifiers? And... Uh, Tenemos las últimas dos. We have the last two. How old? Preguntamos how old cuando estamos queriendo saber la edad. ¿Cuántos años? ¿Verdad? Hubo una vez una persona que dijo how many years do you have? Pensando que era la, la forma correcta de decir cuántos años tienes. How many years do you have? But that's not possible. No, never say that to someone. The way that you have to ask for the age, la forma para preguntarle edad sería, how old are you? Or how old is she? How old is she? How old are they? How old are they? Yes, that's the way that you have to say it. And the last one, la última. Esta no es muy utilizada, es informal, es muy informal, as you can see right there. Que significa, es como una forma de decir, ¿por qué no? ¿Por qué no? Es, si yo digo, how come, es, es haciendo... O preguntando, dando una razón del por qué yo no. Aquí tenemos un ejemplo. Here we have an example. How come I can't see her? ¿Por qué no puedo verla? Este how come se convierte en un sinónimo de why. No es muy utilizado. It's not, it's not that commonly used. And it is very informal. Así que este únicamente es utilizado en lenguaje informal. Eh, es entendible for every person. Like, for example, if you said that to someone, a native person from the States or someone who, who was born in an English country, they will understand what you are saying. But it's a very formal way to say that, okay? So, guys, any questions so far? No. No. If there is no questions, here we comes the part that you need to work on. Okay. We still have uh, like eight minutes. So probably we are not going to finish all, but at least we are going to try it on the first part. So please guys try to, um, you know, to, to take a screenshot or to take a photo and pay attention to this clue. Prestar atención a esta pista, right? 
So you let me know when you already did it. Me dejan saber cuando ya lo hayan hecho. Done. Done, okay. Let's move on to the next one. In esta, in the second one, in el segundo, ¿qué es lo que quiero que hagan? What do I want you to do? In this one, I give you the answers. Le doy las respuestas. So, I need you to create the question that will answer. O sea, necesito que, que creen la pregunta que responderá esta respuesta. I don't know if you get the idea. Okay. All right, perfect. So uh, let's move on. Let's go ahead and see. Great, the groups. Let me see. All right. Let's go, guys. Hello, Eduardo, are you there? What's going on? connect to your to your group or what's going on Hola. Ya se sí. la primera tal vez podría ser how do you go to school how do you go to school Así. En las dos. Those. Hello, Eduardo. Are you still having the same problem? Are you there? Ah. Few questions. Uh -huh. Question simple yeah. present. Yes, el, el do, do it as. 
Where does he work? When when is when is cuando y ahí en, en la tercera sería when es que ahí sería como cuando finaliza la clase when When it, where you see in the photo? No, sé, ¿qué opina? Who are you? see in the forum I have a question, teacher. Yes, go ahead. For for the fears activity. Yep. Uh, we happened? we make we, we make uh, the answer or uh, the question. No, no. About no, the no. word. No, that was just the question. Ah, uh, okay. It was not necessary to have the answer. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. So let's see, guys. Uh, I think that you had enough time, to, at least for the first one. And uh, let me see what you have. I will, let me see, I will. Let me see, I'm trying to look for the exercise. Okay, here it is. All right. So let me see, uh, uh, Mr. Eric, can you please tell me the first one? Okay, um, how do you go to school? Are you sure that that is the right question? Me the same answer, the same question. It is correct. Correct. Yes, very good. I was just trying to see if he was a hundred percent sure. So Mr. Alfred, go ahead with the number two, please. Hello? Yeah, question number two. Uh, where, where is he work? Mm. Does anyone have something different? Alguien tiene algo diferente to what, to what he said? Alguien, algo diferente de lo que él acaba de decir. Where does he work? Exactly. Where does he work? Very good. Number three, Roxana Lopez. Roxana. Oh, she's not there, probably. Mario. Mario. 
When does the class end? Very good. When does the class end? Thank you, sir. Number four, uh, let me see, Kelia. What do you do, your father? Does anyone have alguien más tiene algo diferente? What does your father do? Right. What does your father do? Very good. Thank you, Mr. Let me see. Number the next one, Catherine Ramirez. Catherine. If she's not there, any volunteer? Who do you see in the photo? Very good. Who do you see in the photo? Very good. Thank you. Number six, any other volunteer, guys? How many do you go since how? How many do you go sing how? Alguien tiene algo diferente? Guys, something different. Alguien tiene algo diferente to what she said? No. The answer would be, la respuesta sería, how many cousins do you have? How many cousins do you have? And the last one. Beatriz Inocente, can you help me with the last one? Hello, guys. Este está difícil, teacher. Okay, let me help you. The last one. I see because nobody wants to participate. All right, let me help you. Tenemos why. Después tenemos why do you get up early? On Sundays. Estaba fácil, el mismo, el mismo orden que tenía ahí, solo le tenían que agregar do. Why do you get up early on Sundays? ¿Por qué te levantas temprano los domingos? So, I will leave you there. Vamos a dejar hasta acá. And remember to complete. Por favor, try to complete the exercise number two at home. Because tomorrow we are going to start with that. Mañana vamos a empezar con eso. That was going to be the first thing that we're going to do. So, guys, um, quiero felicitar a ciertas personas que he visto que ya terminaron la, la plataforma. I just want to say congratulations. Thank you so much for your hard work. Uh, I'm checking your, I'm checking the people who's working. And well, I see that most of you are working. But try to do it, guys. Try to work on the platform. Remember that for you to continue on this module, para poder pasar al próximo módulo, it's necessary for you to have at least 80%, 80% at the end of the course. Okay, so please try to do that. Thank you so much for coming to the class. And remember, if you have questions or something, let me know through the chat, okay? And good night, guys. Thank you so much. Okay, for bye. Good night. Bye.